Even we would say a little dirty, icky gooey. <laughs> well, I mean, you could cook them. I bet they'd be healthy enough. You cook them to kill all the bacteria. See, we know about that stuff. They didn't. Uh, land animals that have cleft hoofs are supposed to chew the cud. Why? Well, that's the way things ought to be. Why? Well, because that's, you know, I, I, it doesn't, you see, I can't make sense of that. My building in Atlanta does not have a 13th floor. Is that any sillier than this? Every culture has its peculiarities. We're talking about the peculiarities of the ancient Jewish culture. Uh, you're not, I think, no, this is not 100% cotton, so I'm unclean. And somebody also told me that since I'm wearing leather with cloth, I'm unclean. You're not supposed to mix these things. Why? Well, because things are supposed to be pure and consistent. Uh, it's hard to figure out something of that nature. And when you get to man, the essence of a man yeah, yeah. is to oh, penetrate. To and the essence of a woman, women, excuse me, this is not me, this is, is to be penetrated. One of the Hebrew words in, 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 uh, for woman on, okay. is nekeba, and what it means is orifice bearer. Because <laughs> if men had no orifices. <laughs> that women, the whole essence of womanhood is to be there so men can penetrate them. That is the essence of maleness and femaleness, according to this. And, and, and that's like things fit this pattern. So you don't violate these patterns. You don't mix different cloths. You don't eat uh, birds that eat uh, bird kill. And you don't, this is why this one thing is a thing. Uh, you can see that that's pretty irrelevant. It was the science of the day. It was the way they understood it, as best they could, grappling. We've come a long way, baby, in understanding. I mean, we really, it's amazing what we understand these days, and also how much we don't understand. But, I mean, compared, that's what's going on. If you look at the word itself, it comes from the root toiva that means disgust or distaste. It doesn't use this word. They had Hebrew words for wrong. This is John Boswell's work. Wrong, evil, it doesn't use that word. There was a translation made from the Hebrew to the Greek before Jesus, 300 to 150 years before the time of Christ. They translated the Hebrew into Greek because all the Jews were scattered all over the Roman Empire. Greek was the language of the empire at the time, and the people couldn't read their Hebrew anymore. So they said, we have to translate for the people. Wouldn't it be interesting if we knew what word they used to translate this into Greek? Can you see how there's a powerful clue there? What did the ancient rabbis think that word meant, and what Greek word did they choose to translate it with? Abomination. Did they choose an ethical word, or did they choose a word that means taboo? And we have the evidence. I mean, it's absolutely clear. They used the word deligma that means taboo. But they didn't use the ligma everywhere where this word comes up. Just like you, if you speak Spanish, you know you can't use the same word. Uh, room, casa, or house, casa. If you're talking about the house of representatives, it's not casa, it's camera. And there's another word for house. I don't know, but do you, you know what I mean? There are different, they translated it differently according to the different contexts. They weren't, you know, mono, uh, mono thinkers. If you look in Proverbs, this toiva comes up and they translate it in some places like katharsia, which is the same thing, uncleanness. This word, by the way, is the word that occurs in 1 Romans. God gave them up to impurity. Remember I pointed that out? In Ezekiel it comes up, they translate it anomia, ooh, lawlessness, no law, anomos, wrong, sin, same word. In Proverbs, they translated ponaria, which means evil. By the way, these words also occur in First Romans. But they occur before and after the section on sex. And within the section on sex, you don't get any ethical words. Is that chance? I think Paul just happened to forget to say that homosexuality is evil, and he called it an acatharsia instead? I don't think so. Ezekiel uses asabea to translate this in this place. Notice in different places they translate. That means godlessness. That word also occurs in 1 Romans. Not in the section on sex. Okay. What do you think?
Is it unreasonable? Can you see how I'm thinking? I'm a detective trying to figure out what's going on. Is it unfair for me to assume that those ancient rabbis knew what they were translating? Better than we do. I think so. They did not use an ethical word to translate uh, abomination. So we, the context says it wasn't ethical, it was cultural. The word itself confirms that. What is this lying thing? If you look, uh, there are places in the scriptures where uh, they talk about a woman who experienced the lyings of a man. The result was that she was no longer a virgin. Is it fair to conclude that means sexual penetration? You see, there are glitches. If you want to deny that, we could argue about it. But it seems fair to say that this is what that word means. It has to do with penetrative sex. Uh, in the rabbinic commentaries on the scriptures, they allow two kinds of penetration. Anal and vaginal. Now, I don't know what that was about. I don't know if they understood that, you know, you could have a baby from behind or what. what our understanding of sex is primitive in those days. Nobody knew exactly how. It was only 1873 or something. We knew it took both an egg and a sperm. I mean, that's how recent that information is. You wonder why we're all upset over sex. It's only a few, a hundred years at most. We know anything at all about it. Uh, both counted. And here's uh, the conclusion is going to have to be that lying has to do with penetration. So the, what was forbidden was penetration. Uh, lesbian sex was not forbidden. Why do people usually say it's not forbidden? No penetration. Yeah, that's what you learn now. But what was, the, if you were, before you heard me speak and you say, oh, women, it doesn't mention the women forbidding them. Why not? There's a standard argument that people give. Well, women don't count. In their culture, it didn't matter, and so they didn't mention it was just understood. Uh, by the way, the Ten Commandments, you want to be literal about Try this on one of the fundamentalists. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's husband. No, no, I'm wrong. <laughs> That's not in there, is it? It only says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. That means all the women are off the hook. <laughs> Literally. And in that case, it was because the women didn't matter. But that's not here. Uh, if you look, bestiality that occurs in verse 23, that's the one immediately after the one we're talking about. You mean to tell me they forgot to mention the women in verse 22, but then in verse 23 they remembered them. That doesn't make sense. They deliberately didn't put them in verse 22. Cross-dressing is also forbidden to women in other places, but not women aren't mentioned with uh, lying with the same sex. Uh, so we're, the, again, I'm concluding same-sex acts per se was not the issue. There's nothing on women having sex with each other. Women are really off the hook on this whole thing. <laughs> <Yeah. That's laughs> one so this is what I call the Clinton argument. <laughs> I'm not having sex with that woman. And I'm told that in Baptist teaching that's true, unless you, when you were kids, you remember how far can you go before it's going to be wrong? <laughs> that's what this is about. That's in the scriptures. That's the scriptural account. This can be proved by looking at the Babylonian Talmud. These are commentaries of the rabbis about 200 to 300, 400. It was taking place in Baghdad. That was the center of learning in those days. I mean, the whole history has shifted. They were the leaders of intellectual light. And that's where the big Jewish community was when they got thrown out of Jerusalem by the Romans. Uh, look at, and they have their writings, the text, and along the margin, the, all the rabbis would make their commentaries. So it'll tell us what they thought back in 200, 300 years AD. There was a topic called sporting with boys. <laughs> a Gentile wants to become a Jew, but we all know that the Gentiles sport with boys. Are they allowed to be a Jew? And what did the rabbis say? Well, we wish they wouldn't do this, but the Torah does not forbid it, unless they penetrate. I can show you that in black and white. It's in that reference that's on the hand that I'm going to give you. This is the stuff that just came out in the past, between 1994 and 2000. Uh, there's another thing called female rubbing. And the question is, only a virgin can marry a priest. And if this wo 